Hello and welcome to GMBN Tech. Now this week, it is of course Adventure Week. So we thought we'd give you some tips to get home in an absolute emergency, should something go mechanically awry with your bike. But please use your discretion. These things are to get you home and some of them might not be the safest thing to use long-term. So if you're out on a ride and you notice your brake pads are getting a little low, then this is something you can do. What you want to do is remove this spring. Now this spring is there to ensure your pads don't vibrate within the caliper. So with this removed, it's gonna be a lot louder. But what it does mean is it stops the spring itself fouling on the rotor when you apply your brakes and will able you to eke out precious more material from your pads. The second thing to consider is looking at the pads themselves because sometimes they'll have worn like a wedge shape. Now that can mean if you swap the pads around, you can actually get a little bit more life out of if you don't reset your pistons. Yet again, this is stuff to really just get you home and it isn't something I would suggest doing at the start of a ride. So if you're out on a ride and you have a problem either with your shifter or indeed maybe something to do with the gear inner, all hope isn't lost. Because what you can do is remove the inner cable and get this outer cable out of the way, although we can deal with that in a moment. And what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna feed this inner cable, however long, into the rear mech, straight th through its normal routing. So in this case, it's just gonna loop around there. And then we're just gonna attach it straight to that pinch bolt whilst applying pressure on the cage to hold it somewhere around the middle. You will only have one gear, but that's better than something absolutely massive. And often this method will help you get into the middle of the cassette, whereas your limiting bolts would only get, let you get one or two gears higher. This of course is also very useful on front mechs should you have one. So then you can just loop up the excess and kind of hold it somewhere that's not gonna get entangled in the wheel. And then your mech is gonna stay somewhere in the middle of the block. Another fix relating to our rear mechs is actually using a bit of elastic to act as a spring. If the spring fails in the mech, it can mean that everything looks a bit baggy and a bit of a sorry state, and there isn't enough chain wrap upon the cassette, which then means you don't have much drive. So what you can do with a bit of elastic, and what you can do is attach it to just by the jockey wheel there and to the upper cassette. What this will do will add something like a spring to the mech to ensure you have good chain engagement. Snapping a chain is a very annoying thing to happen to anyone and it's increasingly likely if you're a bit greedy with your gears. Now even if you do have a quick link and are able to reattach it, it will of course be getting shorter. So you need to think about how that works in the context of our bikes. For instance, if you're making your chain shorter, then that big ring at the back might be hard to get into. Now that's also the case if you've got multiple rings on the front. The big and big is definitely a no-go. And this also is related to our rear suspension. As bikes go through their stroke, the chain will undergo chain growth. Now what that means is that if you run around with it in the big ring at the back and you're just about getting away with it, but then go off a big compression, as the bike elongates, it will probably snap the chain again. So irrespective of which problem you're gonna suffer from, I would suggest it's worth indexing out the top two of your gears this will ensure that you will never be in the wrong gear at the wrong time. Should you have a crash and put something like a hairpin in your cable outer, it will mean that your shifting is gonna really, really suffer. So what you can do, even if the beginnings of that inner cable are sort of exposed, you can add a little splint using a little stick and some cable ties. You want to run it so the stick provides a lot of stiffness that the outer cable is needing. So just put it along the section that is damaged, cable tie either end, and you should be all good. We are forever saying how good cable ties are for bodging stuff and getting you home. And it's absolutely true. Cable ties can be used for so many different things, for securing things down. That can be over the nib of the saddle, holding your brake levers on, and a multitude of other applications. For that reason, I always do suggest just carrying one somewhere about your person or your bike at the very least, because you'd be surprised at when it could come in handy. Now this one is 
ultra bodgy, so please don't judge me too harshly, but it can really get you out of a spot of bother. Now, if you or one of your party is wearing clipless shoes and their cleat bolt says goodbye, you can actually, and it's not strictly advisable, but you can actually use a rotor bolt. Now, there's probably six there for a reason. So I'm not saying to run this as your go-to, but just to get you home, using one of these bolts can save you a very long walk indeed. Now this one is something of a fan favorite. Using a tire boot, or in fact, just about anything to stop an inner tube breaching the sidewall of your tire. So like I said, you can use these park tool tire boots, which actually have a bit of a deejan on there to help secure it in place. But if you needed to, you could use anything. Crisp wrapper, five pound note, anything that's gonna stop that inner tube poking out that tire. Electrical tape is something that is quite useful for getting our bikes into a fit state when they have no right to be. But, I mean, let's face it, who's got the time to remember one of these when you're going out for a local spin? However, what you can do is transfer the roll onto something like a CO2 canister or pump, so it's always there in your moment of need. And the good thing is it tends to keep its adhesion very well indeed. So you don't have to worry about it going off or being unusable in the future. So that is it for some of my bike packing and adventure biking bodges to get you home. I've got to say, some of them I'm not all that proud of, but they have helped me personally, so I thought I'd share them with you. Now, which ones have you used personally to get you out of the woods? And in fact, which ones did I miss? Let us know in the comments. Now, thank you very much for watching, and please consider subscribing the channel to support us here at GMBN Tech. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time.